Hey guys, so if the first lesson in the unit is really just about kind of what is the Renaissance and how is it different from the Middle Ages, now we can kind of move on and start looking at what did the Renaissance look like. So one of the aspects of life that is most often discussed with regard to the Renaissance is art. So this lesson is Candela's attempt at becoming an art an analyst. So wish me luck. Here we go. So one thing I can tell you is that Renaissance means rebirth. Um, and in this particular case, we're talking about the rebirth of classical civilizations of Greece and Rome. So, so much so that Greece and Rome were often the subjects of works of art that are created throughout the Renaissance. So below you see um, the School of Athens, which is a perfect prime example of this. Um, and you can kind of take a look at it. And so first of all, this is a piece of art that can be found in the Vatican City, um, kind of, you know, home base for Roman Catholic Church, which is a very small city inside of a city. Um, the Vatican exists in Rome, Italy, and it is its own sovereign territory that is not really governed by Italy. So it is um, kind of like a sovereign country. Uh, so the Vatican has all kinds of fancy art in it, this being one of them. So uh, this is a prime example of Renaissance art because the subject of the art is Athens, okay, School of Athens. So if we talk about the Renaissance being a rebirth of classical civilizations of Greece and Rome, this is a perfect example because this is a painting of Greece. The idea behind this painting is that many of the figures here in this painting are Greek figures. So you look, there's like Socrates and Plato and um, Herodotus and um, Hippocrates. There's, you know, if you look or there's a, you know, if you look online, there's a guide that tells you what are each of the different figures in this painting, and each of them represents someone different from uh, Greek history. So this is a perfect example. There's a lot of other reasons why this is a great example of Renaissance art, and they will become evident later on. But you can see some of the detail and, um, you know, uh, like the 3D aspects of it that are kind of at work also. And that is kind of hallmarks of Renaissance art also. Um, Renaissance art is really all about humanism. Uh, humanism is the idea that we are going to s celebrate and focus on the characteristics that make us different from each other. So um, individualism, detail, uh, the you know potential and ability of different people, and just kind of um, you know paying up. Uh, homage to the differences we have between each other. Um, so there's a lot of reasons for this. So first of all, you see the Mona Lisa. This is arguably the most famous piece of Renaissance art um, that we know of. It is arguably the most famous painting in the world uh, by Leonardo da Vinci. It is housed in the Louvre, L-O-U-V-R-E, which is a fancy museum in Paris, France. Um, in reality, it is not uh, very big. It is maybe twice the size of the cover of your notebook. It is not exceptionally big. So that's one of the surprising things about it. Um, but there's other reasons that are, I won't bore you with about why this is famous, but um, this is our most famous example. So if we really want to know what humanism is, what we really need to do is we need to check out this slide. This slide kind of points out what humanism is all about. Okay, so if you look at pre-Renaissance art here on the left and compare it to the Renaissance art on the right, you can see some of the big major differences that exist here. Okay, I am a total amateur at this and I am not skilled at this in any way, shape or form, but I will walk you through some of the kind of the, the simple observations that I can make. I mean, just with regard to detail for starters, the three figures in this painting here on the left um, they might as well be triplets. I can't tell them apart from each other. Okay, so that's one thing. Here, there's distinct, distinctly different characteristics and features for each of the three figures in this uh, painting here on the right. So that's the first thing I noticed. The second thing I notice is this isn't this doesn't have a lot of depth, as we say. Um, there's foreground, you know, the people sitting in front, and there's background, the person sitting in back, and they all sit against this kind of backdrop, and it's very kind of 
two dimensional, for lack of a better term. So it's not there's not a lot of depth happening here. Here, this is a different story uh, because of the amount of detail and shadow that's being used. We could tell that this figure is sitting in front of these figures who are sitting in front of this pillar behind them, which is in front of the landscape in the back. And you can see houses and then mountains even behind that and a building here and buildings back here. So this has incredible depth. Also, they're using some symbolism here. You can see as these figures kind of gaze downward um, at this child, this child is clearly of a different status than these two, at least as evidenced by some of the details in the picture. Um, you can also see, also see the difference in color, so that might mean something also. So this is kind of like amateur, you know, art analysis, but this kind of, if you want to know, like, what is humanism, the easiest way to understand what humanism is is to identify the differences between these pictures, and those differences are really the characteristics of humanism. That's the best way we can kind of do it. So just, to, I thought it would be helpful to kind of put them up next to each other so you guys can see kind of what the differences are, okay? So um, moving forward, you have a worksheet to do. So uh, there's a short video about da Vinci, and then there's a couple of documents about Michelangelo, who painted the Sistine Chapel ceiling famously, and a an architect also because art is not just limited to painting and so on and so forth so i wanted to include another aspect there too so use the resources i've provided to complete the worksheet and then submit it on uh, google classroom uh, as always i'm around if you guys need help so uh talk to you soon later